All right, so today we're interviewing Sir Jermin Oliveros. Sir Jermin has been involved in the market since 2012 as either an investor or a trader. So he's been trading for a while. And he has been trading full time ever since he migrated to the US a couple of years ago. He's a momentum trader who was under the mentorship of Sir Sirius Lee. And in this interview, we discuss his growth, his journey, his mentorship his accountability groups, and a lot of the things that he finds are key components of what makes up who he is right now as a trader. That said, wala na tayong paligoy-ligoy pa. Let's go right on to the interview. Enjoy! Okay, so good morning and good evening, Sir Jermin. Dahil magkaiba po tayo ng time zone. Uh, maraming salamat po sa pagpapaunlock nyo sa interview request ko. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you for reaching out. At, uh, thank you for um, having me in this. Uh, about the sir video. Parang weird, weird mix na to ng ng video and podcast na pinaghalo. Eh. <laughs> Yon innovation yan, sir. <laughs> Hindi katamaran. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so sir, sa mga hindi pa po nakakakilala sa inyo. Uh, mention ko lang that Sir Jermin uh, runs his own podcast, Buhay Mercado. Uh, you can follow him on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever else that you get your podcast from. And I will include that link in the description box below, no? Para for your convenience. Yon, thank you. Thank you, sir, for sharing. Okay, so start tayo, sir, no? Uh, ito, lahat ko tinatanong to as uh, start sa lahat ng ini-interview ko. Ganun na po kayo katagal nagtitrade? Okay, so actually, I started out not as a trader, but as an investor. Mm-hmm. So I started investing in the stock market 2012. Um, first job ko yun. Tapos yung mga kasama ko sa office, nagsa-stocks. So doon ako naingganyo gumawa ng, ano, ng account sa COL. Mm-hmm. And then I, yung strategy ko back then was investing talaga. So I was part of a truly rich club. If mm-hmm. you guys are familiar with that, so it's a ano a membership na nagbibigay sila ng recommendations on which stocks to buy based on fundamental analysis. So normally blue chips yon, so Ayala, Jollibee, um, GT Cap, and then so I remember the first stock I bought was Fgen um, back in 2012, and then so yun ganon strategy ganon yung strategy. So may lalabas sa newsletter sabi yung stock picks, bibilin mo siya at this price, as bibenta mo at this price. So, ganun. So, I I done that. Um, kumuha kami ng account with my ex-girlfriend before na now wife. So, ano kami? <laughs> Share kami this account na yun. And then, we invested for five years na rin. Siguro, 2012 to 20... I would say 2017. So, five years. So, during that five years, okay naman. Um, we had around 30 to 40% port gain during that five years. So, mm-hmm. very happy with the result as an investor. Pero, nung 2017, ano, binigyan ako ng curveball ng life. <laughs> Kasi, may nakilala ako. I, I actually, hindi, kilala ko na siya. May na-meet ako na uh, friend ko ng college na nagtitrade. And ito, nakawinta ko rin to sa podcast ko. Pero ang sabi niya sa amin, nag-retire na siya at age 28, 27, wow. ganyan. <laughs> Iko, ha? Paano ka nag-retire? At 28 ka lang. Eh, ano naman, kilala ko siya nung college. So, parang familiar naman ako na um, I'm sure na nag-work siya before. Tapos, parang hindi naman siya... Parang normal na tao lang na <laughs> dyan. Hindi naman siya Ayala. Hindi naman Ayala yung apelido niya. Ganyan. Or Pangilinan. <laughs> so, or C. Ganyan. So, ay, ganyan nangyari. So, paano mo nagawa? Sabi niya, nagkitrade daw siya. And yung gains niya from trading is bigger than his current sweldo. Yung mm-hmm. sweldo niya before. So, kaya siya nag-retire to go full-time trading. So, 
Like, oh, wow, ano ba? May ganun pala. May, may possibility pa dyan na ganun sa trading. So, dun. Dun ako na, dun ako nag-start, no? So, shout out dun sa friend ko na yun. At, <laughs> sinabi niya sa akin kung saan mag-start. So, pinalo ko yung mga blogs na, fami- na sikat before. And then, I bought my first trading book, which is, uh, ano yun? <laughs> yung kay Jason Cam. <laughs> um, Trading, trading code. code. Yeah, there. <laughs> trading code. Yeah. So then I like start and the rest is history kasi when I was reading the trading code parang may nag-click sa akin na I'm really drawn into trading and I think I finally found my passion kasi before pag ano pag meron akong tinatry na bagay tapos hindi ko siya type mm-hmm. hindi automatically eh. So, yung trading code, natapos ko siya kagad in a few days. Tapos after noon, I was yearning for more. So, sabi ko, ah, ba, may, may kakaibang nangyari. Ah. Mukhang sobrang saya nito. Ah. So, yan, 2017 yun. So, I started trading. Binenta ko lahat ng holdings ko dun sa investor account and converted that account into a trading account. So, yan, 2017 to 2021, four years na rin pala. Or three years and something months. Tagal nang sagot, haba nang sagot ko, sir. Ha? Sorry. <laughs> Hindi, mas maganda yung ganun, sir. Yung, uh, tawag ito? So, since you started with your trading account, uh, nag-quit na po kayo sa job nyo nun. Talagang nag-focus lang kayo sa trading. Okay, okay. Uh, good question. No? So, actually, hindi. Um, I quit my job 20, late 2018, pero not because of trading, actually. So, I quit my job to migrate here in the US. Mm-hmm. So, late 2018, ayun, uh, I had my last corporate job. And then, while I was here, uh, I actually don't have uh, the permit to work kasi yung wife ko yung may permit to work. Siya yung mm-hmm. resident sa US. No? So, ako, as a house band, <laughs> go, how can I make uh, use of my time na productive habang we while waiting for my papers so while waiting for my permit to work no and then yun so syempre nag deep dive na ako sa trading and during that time yun uh, sali ako ng mga uh, mentoring programs keep ano every day keep showing up lang and then yun full time na hanggang ngayon dumating na yung papers ko pero full time trader pa rin ako <laughs> wow nice alam ko marami sa mga uh, kababayan natin yan din yung pangarap no na makataka sa rat race and yun nga makapag quote and quote bukas ng sarili lang negosyo whether it's trading or something else. Mm-hmm. Yep. So ngayon po sir na nandiyan kayo sa uh, US. Um ang primary market po ba na tinetrade nyo is sa uh, PSE pa rin or do you also trade crypto, forex, um uh, US markets and so on? Ayun, so medyo full time talaga ako no. So <laughs> nagte-trade ako ng Nag-trade lang ako ng US. Meron akong broker, brokerage around, account here. Uh, meron din akong crypto. And then meron din akong PSEI. So, tatlo. <laughs> wow. Talagang ano ah. Talagang committed, sir. Ang daming charts na tinitignan nun. Uh, medyo madami. Pero um, actually, time-wise, it's very... I wouldn't say convenient, pero nakakatawa kasi nagpipit siya ng okay din sa skid. Kasi yung US, morning siya sa akin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, crypto would be hapon just before mag-open yung PSEI. And then, after mm-hmm. kumag crypto, PSEI naman. So, kumbaga yung, <laughs> yung cycle is very, ano, uh, meron pa akong rest time. Kumbaga. So, after ng umaga, merong Uh, afternoon, after lunch, hanggang hapon na pwede akong gawin ko anong gusto, gusto ko. Then, I finish around 10pm here. Mm-hmm. Yun na yung close ng PSEI. Kung hindi pa babalik dun sa dating full time. Kasi, as you all know, naka half, half day lang ang PSEI because of COVID. Yes. No? So, pagbalik ng, ano, ng full day, yun, pagod na naman ako. <laughs> <laughs> But, ngayon, happy ako sa schedule. Pero actually, I like the new schedule. Parang, mm. Yes. Dati kasi meron pang kumbaga meron pang curve volume market minsan eh. Ngayon mm-hmm. kailangan kakabukas pa lang magdesisyon ka na ako ano gusto mong gawin. <laughs> kasi yes, wala yes. kang oras para magpaligoy-ligoy. Mm-hmm. Tama tama. Meron din kaming na papansin na ganyang ano mga behavior ng stocks ngayon na ano parang dati 
ng wawasiwas, pero ngayon committed na siya. Yes, Lalo sir. na yung lunch break dati. After ng lunch break, parang may magic na nangyari on open. So, Oo. <laughs> ngayon, nawala yung part na yun. So, it's very convenient and very, ano ba, very straightforward na din. Yeah. Tsaka yun nga, yung, yung time eh, we all want more time to be able to do other things. Kasi, right. kung kumikita ka nga naman sa market, pero yung oras mo naman, lagi rin na sa market, parang sayang din, di ba? Mm. Now, yung nasabi niyo sir, yun nga among the markets that you trade, meron ba kayong favorite o para sa inyo pare-pareho lang lahat 'yan? Favorite? Wala naman. Um Siguro yung ano, <laughs> eto na lang, iba-iba kasi sila ng characteristic eh. So, crypto is the fastest. Um PSE is the most enjoyable to trade for me kasi uh mabagal siya. Mm-hmm. And, syempre, nandito yung community na sa PSEI. So, I'm, nag-enjoy ako na ano, may pag usap sa traders, sa PSEI. Mm-hmm. Siguro one thing na din yung kung ba't hindi ako nag-fully migrate to US markets, no? Pero, ano, um, technically speaking, as in technical analysis-wise, US is very, ano, interesting. Kasi hindi ka nauubusan ng place. Mm-hmm. So, ang daming stocks. And yung strategy ko ngayon is very chill sa US kasi nagtitrade ako sa US end of day lang. Mm. And it's it's doing well for me so far kahit end of day lang ako mag-trade sa US kasi ang daming ang stocks na pagpipilian na kumbaga hindi ka naghahabol ng pangit na setup or half-baked setup kasi laging, laging meron. So, kung mm-hmm. wala today, hintay ka lang tomorrow meron na yun. Parang ganyan. So sir na mention nyo na about community. Uh, mm. I know sa mga nakikinig sa atin malamang may na-intrigue dun sa word na yun kasi a lot of the people I interview may na mention sila na it's very important that the group that you uh, spend time with or that you align yourself with kumbaga medyo magkasundo kayo ng views na magkasundo kayo ng trading styles, di ba? Yes. Um, open po ba yung community nyo sa public sir? And if you don't mind uh, baka pwede nyo sabihin kung anong community yon. Oh, okay. So, sure. Um, so, ngayon, part ako ng ano ba? Uh, dalawa. I would say dalawa na medyo active na community. So, yung isa is SSF or Series Special Force. So, yun yung mentorship program under ni Boss Jordan Tan or kay Seriously, if you're familiar with him. Mm, okay. um, so, actually, I, I'm part of the first batch ni Sir Jordan's. Kaya napamahal sa akin yung SSF kasi... <laughs> Simula sa pool, nandun ako. So, parang, uh, yun, napamahal na rin sa akin yung community. And lahat ng, ng tao doon, same kami ng style kasi same kami ng mentoring program na sinalihan. So, mm-hmm. we're all momentum traders in SSF. And the other one would be P4P or pound for pound under kay Cap, under kay Cap Kid Lat, no So, yun naman, price action trading. So, it's, um, I would say it's different from SSF kasi we're not focused on momentum sa P4P. Mm-hmm. Pero still the same, yung community is very active. Um, daming, daming, ano, nagbibigay ng tulong, siya nang, ano, nagpo-post ng mga trades nila for day section. So it's very helpful. And aside from those two communities, meron din akong dalawang groups or accountability group na I'm very proud of. Kasi uh, talagang ang ganda ng na-build namin na, ano, na atmosphere at mm-hmm. Kumbaga, nagtutulungan kami talaga na maghilaan pa taas. No? Hindi lang sa trading. Hindi lang sa trading. Kumbat. Pero sa, ano rin, sa life din. No? So, minsan mm-hmm. business yung pinag-uusapan namin. Minsan love life. Minsan ulam. <laughs> so, talagang ano, very very open. So, very very proud of my two accountability groups. So, District 6 and 9 sa P4P and yung ALAC. Alak group yung tawag namin sa SSF na AG kasi may hindi kami uminom. <laughs> Ay kami nagiinuman. Alright. And ano ah, itong accountability groups na to, never ko pa sila na meet in person. Pero I would consider them one of my closest friends. Kasi talagang araw-araw kami nag-uusap. Um, alam ko kung ano yung nangyari sa life nila. Alam nila kung ano yung nangyari sa life ko. So yun, so yung community na ganun, um, it really helps you continue with trading. Lalo na pag during bad days or during days na frustrating, di ba? Um, yung community, it's very helpful and very important to build. 
Okay. So, sa mga uh, nagtataka no, about these, I'll post links for inquiries na lang sa description box uh, para we won't focus too much on them kasi alam ko, mm-hmm. marami pa tayong pag-uusapan and baka maubusan tayo ng oras. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> All right. So, uh, one of the things that I try to do differently in my interviews is I try not to focus too much on yung uh, entry approach ng mga traders. Mm-hmm. Lalo na kapag nananalo yung trade. Kasi I always believe na kapag nananalo yung trade, anyone can manage it. Ko up ka ng 20-30%, sabi mo pa sa akin na, just ko, ang hirap namang i-manage yung trade na to. May problema mm-hmm. tayo. <laughs> diba? Pero, I think a lot of the focus usually goes dapat sa proper risk management. Right. So, I just wanted to ask, kayo po sir, nasabi nyo, momentum trader kayo. So, mm-hmm. what strategies do you use to evaluate risk? Well, um, one of the things na I would say that changed drastically sa trading ko would be my approach on how I see a trade. So, mm-hmm. a beginner, when I was a beginner a few years ago or even last year, <laughs> ang unang tinitingnan is reward. Mm-hmm. Pero that transition to ngayon na puro risk first approach na. So, to answer your question, I'm using VAR or value at risk. In mm-hmm. all my trades, all my trades, crypto, US, PSEI. Um, whenever I enter a setup, uh, syempre with good risk-reward ratio, I always look for risk first. So, mm-hmm. kaya yung, ano ko, yung positions ko, it changes, it varies from time to time. Kaya, kaya lagi ako may calculator. Ayun yung calculator ng tindahan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yung malaking calculator. <laughs> Lagi ako may ganun. Pero syempre sa, sa computer na lang. Pero <laughs> lagi ako may ganun before I open a trade. Uh, kasi I always want to know uh, the correct allocation based on my risk. So laging, laging ganun. Mm-hmm. Laging var first. So 100% agree. No? I think it's one of the things that a lot of new traders uh, don't like taking into account. Kasi sino nga ba naman gusto mag-isip na bago ka palang pumasok kung magkano yung pwede mong matalo? Siyempre, uh, gusto natin <laughs> maisip is, uy, mananalo ko to the moon, di ba? Mm-hmm. Pero, risk is very important because, as we all know, kung wala kang kapital, wala ka sa laro. Right. Kung wala right. ka sa laro, hindi ka talaga mananalo. Uh, uh, ano, uh, gusto ko lang i-share, mabilis lang na tidbit. Mm-hmm. So, nung 2019, Uh, 2019, 2021 na pala, bilis ng taon, no? Oh, so, huh? 2019, uh, nag-start pala ako ng full-time trading nun. No? So, during that year, wala akong kinita. Wala akong kinita, sin zero. Pero, ang win rate ko, ang win rate percentage ko is, ano, around 30% lang. Pero, mm-hmm. yung end of the year, ano ako, 0% loss. So, but yun know, paano ako nagawa yun? Kasi I'm only taking big big risk-reward ratio. So, yung mga wins ko, kahit bihira siya, since 3 to 1 yung risk-reward ratio ko, at the end of the year, kahit 30% yung win rate, walang damage sa portfolio ko. So, during that year, talagang natuwa ako on the power of risk first approach. Kasi yun niya, protected na protected yung capital kahit Mm-hmm. Kahit noong 2019, di pa ako ganun kagaling for, ano, uh, para kumuha ng rewards, no? Pero at the very least, hindi ako natalo. So, yun yung, yun yung small yung kwento ko about risk first approach. Yes. Super important. Actually, ako personally, natuto ako doon sa ganyang approach nung nag-start ako mag-forex. Mm. Um, I was already I was already profitable sa PSE, but not by a lot. But, alam mo at the very least, hindi ka pula. Yun lang. Uh. Pero once I started applying yung risk-first approach, yung more discipline, dun yung mas lumabas, yung consistently profitable na sa markets moving forward. So, say nyo, so, so, so far sa trading nyo, sir, no, over the past uh, three, four years na mas mm-hmm. nag-trade na kayo full-time, what was the riskiest trading decision that you have ever made? Pwede nyo bang ikwento ng konti? Ah, okay. So, riskiest trade decision, funny enough, hindi ito, hindi ito, ano, hindi ito some needle in the haystack na trade ko a few years ago. Mm-hmm. This happened recently. Hindi naman sobrang recent, pero mga 
uh, May, ganyan. Okay, kailan lang? <laughs> oh, sandali, ano lang, this lang, this year lang. So, it's a trade on crypto. Um, so, during crypto, uh, quick background pala. So, PSEI is long only. US is long and short, pero I don't do shorts sa US. So, long din, long lang din ako. So, mm-hmm. sa crypto, uh, may long and short, di ba? So, madali mag-long and mag-short sa crypto with leverage. So, ang nangyari sa akin that I would say is the riskiest trade I've ever made and I wouldn't do it again is I keep on shorting the high flyers. So, ginagawa ko, meron akong screener, titingnan ko yung strongest names or strongest coins sa crypto for that mm-hmm. day. And then, sinoshort ko sila. So, syempre, since sila yung strongest flyers at uptrend ng BTC, malamang cut ako ng cut, no? So, <laughs> so talagang iniisip ko, Talagang naubos yung ano ko, may time na na nangalahati yung ano ko, yung crypto port ko. No? Though hindi naman siya ganoon kalaki kasi I was just dabbling with crypto back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, so hindi ganoon kalaki yung damage pero psychologi- psychologically at mentally talagang ang sama ng loob ko kasi but ko ginagawa yung ganoon. At hindi lang siya one single trade it. It's a series of trades na In my head, before that, kaya ako siya tinitake is, hindi ko kasi nasasakyan yung upward momentum. Mm. So, in my head, mag-ano siya, magre-retrace to. So, pwede ko siya i-short. So, pero since, ano, since uptrends nga siya and it's a strong, it's a, it's a strong coin, laging, lagi akong cut. So, yun. So, ang kabalik na naman nun sa PSEI is catching a falling knife or bottom picking, no? Mm-hmm. So, downtrend tas binibili mo it's the same as uptrend tas sino short ko so parang ganun yun yung hindi ko nagagawin talaga <laughs> <laughs> pero iba talaga yung ganun iba yung iba yung approach overall kapag ka you're trying to uh, identify tops and bottoms mahirap talaga oh lalo na yung ano yung mga wala ng resistance yung mga all time high ganyan or multi year high tas sino short ko yun ang yun yung mga sino short kong coin no so kaya maling mali talaga Which is yeah, halos lahat ng coins at the time was like that. Diba? Kasi ang daming right, coins right. na nagsulputan. Yung oh. SLP, kung ano-ano pa, Sol. Mm, dati, yan, yung mga malalakas. Doge, uh, Matic, mga ganyan dati. Pero hindi naman kaya ever na margin call sa crypto. Ay, hindi naman, hindi naman. So, yun nga, since risk first ako, mm-hmm. kahit tinitrade ko yung mga ganun, Pangit yung setup. Pero yung risk ko manageable pa din. So, cut lang ako ng cut. Madala, madalas ako nagka-cut since ginagawa ko yung trade na yun. Pero yung cuts ko naman is uh, not that big. So, buhay pa ako. Yes. Mm, okay. Kasi yun yung isa sa mga mahirap na lahi ko naririnig pag may nagkakwento sa akin whether a student or may nag-PM na ah, anong gagawin nila sa crypto, nasunod mm. yung account nila, paano daw nangyari yun. Tapos, maririnig mo kasi over-leverage sila sa trades nila. Right. And then at that time, there's really not much to say. Kasi parang, di ba, alam naman sabihin mo na, hindi, dapat. Hindi mo li eh, tapos na eh. <laughs> oh, tapos na. So, yeah. yun pala, ano, mm-hmm. yung connect ko lang dun sa kanina na pag-usapan about risk. So, when I trade crypto, uh, hindi ako nakaset leverage. So, depends on my risk. In, in edit ko yung leverage ko. So, minsan weird yung ano eh. Yung makikita ko yung trades ko, time, minsan time 7, mm-hmm. <laughs> time 6, ganyan. Kasi it, it depends on risk. Kaya ako in edit yung leverage. So, so, yung iba kasi nakikita ko, laging 10x or laging 20x. So, for me, hindi siya applicable for my trading style since I focus on trade on risk first. Ayan. So, use leverage to your advantage. Ako naman, ever since ang turo sa akin ng mentor ko when it comes to using leverage, yung primary purpose niya is for you to be able to deposit less into your primary account. Right. Mm, Kasi tama. lalo na sa crypto, may ibang mga brokers, magugulat ka na lang. I, I mean, I won't name names, pero maraming nangyari ito. Na bigla na lang, makikita mo, nagsara na. Yung iba pa, literally, nagpost na, dinaya ka nila, ganun. Mm. So you really don't want your entire savings deposited with your broker. So you use leverage instead para kunwari sabi natin you want to trade a $10,000 account for example. Pwedeng $2,000 na lang i-deposit mo or one five na lang i-deposit mo and trade it as if it's a $10,000 account without having all your money stuck with your broker. Yes, tama tama. So ganun nga yung ano talaga, ganun yung use talaga ng leverage eh. 
And syempre, ano, um, it has its advantages or disadvantages. Lalo na it could magnify your result. So if you're a winning trader, then go ahead if you're if pasok sa risk mo. No? So, pero if you're not uh, a winning trader yet, maka think twice about using leverage. Yes. So, na-mention yung nga kanina, sir, na there was a time back in 2019 na your win rate was around 30%, no? Mm-hmm. So, how do you handle whenever you experience losing streaks in trading? Wow. Okay. Nice question. Uh, kwento ko lang, no? <laughs> I'm an open book, no? So, yung mm-hmm. ang longest losing streak ko nung 2019 to, 2019 to nangyari, is 12 trades. Ngayon yung alam ba kayo doon? 12 trades. 12 trades akong talo. <laughs> so, paano siya nangyari? So, I keep on taking um, bad setup, syempre. Bad entries. Pilit na setup. Meron pa akong, as a person kasi, kilala ko din yung sarili ko na, uh, if you're familiar with Von Tarp's trader profile, so may yeah. ano lang siya. Yeah, online test siya, di ba? And so I took that test. I forget yung result ko. Pero ang nag-stick with me with that test result was, ang weakness ko daw is, I have the need to be right. I have the need to be right. So, mm-hmm. pag natatalo ako, lalo akong nagtitrade. Kasi gusto ko, mana- gusto ko manalo. Gusto yes. ko ma-prove na tama ako. So, yun yung problem. So, kaya, ano, kaya umabot siya ng 12 trades. No? And then, it, what happened back then was, I talked to one of my mentors na nagsuggest sa akin na take a step back. Um, take a break if you need to. And then, do what's necessary para ma-change mo yan. Mag-focus ka lang sa isang trade, sa isang trading setup. Mm-hmm. I mean. So, syempre ako, matigas ulo ko. Hindi ako nag-stop. Hindi ako nag-stop mag-trade. No? Nag-stop ako siguro one day lang. <laughs> I recommend niya one week eh. At least one week. Siguro one day lang. It's like, okay na ako. Kal- kal- na yung uta ko. <laughs> Pero, what I did was, yung second part ng ano niya, ng sinabi niya, is sinunod ko na. So, I focus on just one tri- one setup, which is breakouts. Mm-hmm. Yun, dire-diretso ako. Uh, puro breakout lang tinrade ko for the next two months. Uh, para lang makuha ko yung ano, para lang makuha ko yung confidence ulit to trade other setups, no? Mm-hmm. And then, yun. Um, I, you already know my story for 2019. I ended the, a year flat or zero. Mm-hmm. Which is better kasi kung nalaman nyo lang na, kung nalaman nyo na meron akong 12 losing streak, magugulat kayo na zero yung ano ko, diba? <laughs> at the end of the year, diba? So, parang ako thankful na ako na nag-zero ako during 2019. Eh, and daming, daming lessons that year kasi yun yung first full year ko na full-time trading talaga. Pero maganda yung nasabi niyo yun, sir, no? Kasi a lot of us, um, parang, parang limited minsan, eh, yung view sa probability. So, kunyari, sinabi na, ah, 30% win rate. Ang expectation natin is, uh, kailangan yung 30% na yun, yung talo at saka panalo, well distributed. Mm, Pero right. hindi naman ganun, eh. Me- technically speaking, if you lost the first 30, then won the next 70, 70% win rate ka pa rin, eh. <laughs> right, right, tama. So, hindi mo alam when that streak will come na puro panalo or when that streak uh, will come na puro talo. Pero during this time, sir, nag-exercise na kayo ng strict risk management. Kaya kahit pa paano, even with the 12 consecutive lo- uh, losses, manageable pa rin. Right. Uh, so, I never lose more than 1% of my current port. Um, so, I think that's one thing that saved me during 2019. No? So, talagang minimal yung damage. Support ko every trade. And then, yun naman, yung 12 losing streak. Meron naman akong konting sense na magbaba ng allocation <laughs> habang, habang natatalo ako. <laughs> so, so, yun. So, may ganong konting sense pa ako nun. <laughs> Kaya, nakatulong din at the end of the day. Wag, wag puro all-in lang, no? Wag puro all-in. Okay. Tapos ka. <laughs> so, uh, na-mention nyo, sir, na yun nga, yung the way you approach risk, yung you use uh, VAR, tapos yung paglagay nyo ng halaga sa community, tapos paano kayo nag-recalibrate based sa advice ng mentor nyo. Mm-hmm. So now, ngayon, for the next, for the last uh, year and a half, or to two years after 2019, kamusta naman po yung 
uh, pagtrato sa inyo ni Miss Market? Okay, uh, I'm very happy with 2020 um, with the pandemic and all. So, <laughs> uh, one thing that uh, went right during that year was I found my accountability group. Both of my accountability groups last year, 2020, sila na form. So, mm-hmm. halos, ay, one year na pala. Happy anniversary, guys. And uh, at the end of the year ng 2020, I was up 60, around 60%. So, very happy with that. I'm Siyempre, ano, it's hindi siya katulad ng iba na 100%, 100%. Pero coming from a 0% noong 2019 during my first year and then 60% last year, I, I am very happy. For 2021, um, aminin ko, I'm very challenged during the first quarter kasi dami rin, nung, alam niyo naman, ng March yung kung ano nangyari this year. So, Merong time si PSEI na pabagsak siya this year. No? And then, medyo natamaan ako dun. Not that big. Um, mm-hmm. Pero, 2021 at the end of the year, let's see ko na mangyayari. No? So, I'm still very hopeful. And ngayon, ngayon kasi nagre-recover na si PSEI. So, na, nare-recover na natin yung losses from the first quart- first few quarters. And so, uh, meron pa namang five months. Hindi ako nagmamadali. And, yun. Uh, can't say kung definitely kung anong what would happen this year pero it's looking good so far pero you're right no 2021 the market has been let's just say na hindi siya ganun ka cooperative <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. uh, i think yung january yung rally was mostly caused by a lot of third liners right, i think right. that was yung time ng bsc apple mm. ar and mm. then after a while sila rin yun ng ipet na <laughs> right right yeah so yeah um tama ito. tama sila silang tatlo silang tatlo nga ang high flyer so yeah. during that time kasi wala akong nasakyan dun sa tatlo so when the market was giving away money i wasn't there kasi i wasn't trading really for the first few first few months of 2021 so i was pretty occupied with other stuff So, nung nakapunta naman ako sa PSEI, ano na, parang correction mode na. So, ang nangyari, uh, hindi na okay yung, ano, yung mga setups masyado. No? So, kaya, kaya ako tinamaan. And then, ang story for Q2, for my Q2 is, I stopped trading PSEI kasi I, I don't like what's the in, what the index is doing. Mm-hmm. So, yan. Talaga nasa sidelines lang ako. And ngayon lang ako ulit mabalik. Actually, for the past... two weeks wala akong trade. So, this week lang ulit ako nagtitrade sa PSEI. So, ganun, ganun ko siya ginagawa. No? So, hindi ko na pinipilit na yes. maganap ng setup. Pero ngayon, pag meron na, tsaka lang ako mag-show up. Parang ganun. Pero that's another thing, no, guys? So, sana we take that to heart. Yung discipline lang na minsan talaga wala eh. Huwag natin itilit kasi kapag pinipilit natin, madalas hindi naman maganda ang resulta. Eh. Oo. Oh, mahirap, mahirap pagpilit. So sir, uh, as a next question ko, I always tell ng mga ini-interview ko to put their humility aside for one minute or for a minute or two. Mm-hmm. Para sa inyo, what makes you stand out over other traders? Lalo na kayo, uh, you, you've, you've been part of various communities, you, you know more than a handful of traders. So what do you think na yung katangian nyo that makes you stand out over other traders? <laughs> okay. So, uh, again, yung ano dito is, I don't really see myself as that exceptional <laughs> as a trader. Pero, what w- one thing that would make me exceptional kung, kung meron man is, whenever I feel like stopping or whenever I feel like quitting, I don't. Talagang... Meron akong sinasabi sa sarili ko palagi na whenever I was, I'm frustrated or I'm in a losing streak, lagi kong sinasabi na trading is a skill, it takes years to build a skill, and kung hindi ko to titigilan, for sure gagaling ako. So yun yung, yun yung lagi kong sinasabi in my, in my head. And I think that kept me in this game for the past few years. No? And I think it would... Um, bring me the distance in. So, I think that's it. Just mindset talaga. Uh, Technical-wise, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not exceptional or 
business wise even pero yan yung mindset ko na I won't quit sa trading is I think very solid and that really helped me in my career so would you say na yun, that level of perseverance uh, is what you would consider as one of the most important personality traits that any trader should have oh oh eh kasi trading it's a marathon really uh and in any, any marathon kailangan mo rin kailangan mo ng perseverance eh um di ba familiar tayo lagi na sinasabi na 80 80 to 90% of traders fail Mm-hmm. Pero ang caveat kasi doon is doon sa 80 to 90% na nagfe-fail doon, karamihan doon nagki-quit kasi. So yung the 10% that win is those that ano, uh, tough it up. Kumbaga, lagi lang laging showing up and in the trenches, willing to learn and laging always on the quest for imp- self-improvement, no? So yun, yun yung I really believe in that. So, based nga sa nasabi nyo na yun nga, patuloy na perseverance, patuloy na self-improvement, over the years that you've been trading, uh, do you think that trading has improved the quality of your life? Or maybe the better question would be, has trading changed you for better or for worse in any way? Oh, so, meron akong friend na, meron akong friend na tinro. <laughs> So, layo ng sagot ko yun. Eh, no? Pero meron akong friend na tinuruan <laughs> kung mag-trade. And, so, napag-usapan namin yung ano, intangible side ng trading about mindsetting, about positive talks with yourself. Kumbaga, um, meditation, nahalo siya. And then, one thing that I said to him was, mag-ready ka kasi trading is a gateway drug to being a good person. <laughs> Okay. Sorry ko talaga. Madaming, madami kang stuff na kailangan malaman tungkol sa sarili mo at maraming, maraming bagay na kailangan ka itry na that to, para gumaling ka sa trading and at the same time, may giving better person ka to it. So, <laughs> yun lang eh. Kailang, sa trading kasi it's very personal. You need to know yourself. And ilang, ilan ba sa atin, ilan ba sa mga tao yung had the chance to really introspect and know themselves know their weakness, know their strengths. Yan, yung for me, nalaman ko na meron niya akong inherent need to be right. Mm-hmm. So, through trading ko siya nalaman. And I, I, uh, I observed na nangyayari din siya outside of trading. So, mga ganun na, ano, mga ganun na lessons na natutupunan natin through trading is directly applicable to life outside trading. So, yan. Uh, three, to answer your question, yes, it changed me for the better 100%. No doubt. Uh, I'm a better person because of trading. Pero ang ganda nun, sir, gateway drug to being a good person. Manakaw nga. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Pero, uh, na-mention nyo kanina that uh, one of the reasons that appealed to you kung bakit nyo na-decide to stop investing and become more of an active trader is yung friend nyo na nagkwento na he was mm. able to retire from his job and, you know, basically live off of trading na. Right, right. Um, aside from that person, have there been any other people, uh, whether or not you can say their name is okay, mm-hmm. na nag-serve as an inspiration or guidance to you during your trading journey? Well, of course, ano, uh, a lot of my mentors. So I've had four, five, bala, five direct mentors in, in my trading career. So, yan, so, so si Cap, si Sir Sirius, or si Sir George. Yung friend ko na yon na nag ano sa akin, na, na nag retire ng maaga at nagturo sa akin mag trade. Actually, tinuruan din niya ako, so I treat him as a mentor then. Mm-hmm. Um, Si T3, si Tato Trader. I've been mm-hmm. under T3 then. And yung pinaka-recent ko is the Phantom Trading. So, si Jerome. So, itong five mentors ko is very, very big on my trading careers. Kasi, I think I'm, kumbaga, I, I'm the sum. I mean, di naman sum, pero <laughs> I took what I can from each of them. I picked their minds. And kung wala sila, wala ako ngayon sa trading. 
And yun, balik ko lang aside from aside from mentor, my mentors which taught me technical stuff and um intangibles as well. Very big talaga for me is yung accountability groups. Talagang without them I don't I can't imagine before na wala akong accountability group. Hindi ko alam kung ba 2020 lang siya na uso. <laughs> 2020 lang namin siya na buo. Pero I can't really imagine my trading life without my accountability groups right now. Okay. Nicely said, sir. No, Talagang important nga yung accountability sa trading kasi, well, number one, minsan talaga kailangan mo nang may kakwentuhan na nakakaintindi sa'yo kapag binibuisit ka ni Miss Market. Eh. Oh. <laughs> But the important thing is, without yung review, without yung accountability, it's really hard to improve. Right. A lot of people consider improvement as just simply being profitable. Pero hindi eh. Mm-hmm. Improvement is talagang linggo-linggo, taon-taon, buwan-buwan. May nakikita ka na na- naayos mo, na babago mo sa trading. Kasi, yun nga eh. The market humbles everyone. And in order for you to stay more or less ahead of the curve, kailangan humble ka rin sa pag-accept ng mga ano eh, mga deficiencies mo eh. Kailangan alam mo na lahi ka nag improve kasi kung hindi, your next trade could be your last eh. Right. And, yun yung, um, I shared this analogy rin in my, in one of my podcast episodes, no, na, trading is a solo sport, pero, you, da- you don't, it doesn't mean na, you can't have a team. So, it's like, ano running or mm-hmm. track and field diba so when you run magisa ka lang kasi pare yung mga dashes 100 meter dash pero during training you train with the team and your team teaches you their strategy you teach them your strategy you uh you push each other to become better no and very applicable talaga sa trading yun kasi yun ya um uh, what you said not not just technical so no? pero More importantly, yung connections talaga with people that know what you're going through and are either they went through it before or they're just going through it right now. It really helps eh. Um, yung baga may nakakausok ka na naiintindihan ka. I, I really believe that it's very helpful. Mm-hmm. Sa so bagay, kahit na si Ma'am Hidilin, Shout out, congrats, ma'am. Tama. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> siya yung nakakuha ng ginto, pero meron din siyang team na I'm sure natulungan siya along the way. Oh, tama, tama, tama. Good, good analogy. So, as we continue on this journey yung sa trading, how do you feel you would define success as a trader? I mean, syempre, oh, aside, from, aside from monetary gains, ha, kasi part na yan ng game. Eh. Parang, sino ba naman ang gusto nalulugi? Eh, diba? hmm. But aside from that, how do you define na, okay, I'm succeeding as a trader? Okay, so, actually, yung money part, it's something that, let's face it, kaya tayo pumasok sa trading is because of the money initially. Pero, one of my mentors said, uh, si Cap, sinabi niya sa amin na, Money is just the goal before the goal. So, meron talaga tayong goal in life. Walang tao na ang goal in life lang niya is mag-swimming sa pera. Ang goal niya, meron, meron tayong sarili-sariling goal. Mm-hmm. So, it may change from one person to the next. Mine would be to sit in the beach, read the book all day. So, that's one of my goals. And money would bring me closer to that goal. Mm-hmm. So, to answer your question, I would... Say na successful trader ako when I, when I could move on to my next goal. Kumaga, money is not a problem anymore and I can do what I want. Uh, and yun, uh, kumbaga, fin- not just financial freedom, but talagang self-fulfillment. No? So mm-hmm. whatever fulfills you, if it's laying on the beach like me, helping other people, uh, finding the cure for cancer, going to space or whatever. So, kung ano man, whatever that thing that fulfills you is, whenever you have the time and the resources to achieve it, I think that's when I could consider myself or someone as a successful trader. Nice. Ang ganda, no? So, guys, in the next few years, kapag pupunta kayo ng Boracay, mangungupahan na tayo kay Sir Jermin, ha? <laughs> 
Meron na section doon, yung buong section 1, bawal na tayo pumasok kasi nagbabasa <laughs> Sir Jermaine doon. <laughs> doon lang tayo sa iba. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> naman. Open, open. Open natin yun. Para may kasama. <laughs> so, um, I always ask this too in all of my interviews uh, because a lot of the people who listen or watch these videos, uh, marami sa kanila nag-trade na for a while pero nahihirapan pa either baka pulado pa sila or baka they're having a hard time na maging consistently profitable. ba? Diba? Ano yung advice na pwede mo ibigay sa kanila na pwedeng mag-serve as, you know, either motivation or a push para they can get on the right track? Okay. So actually, we've been discussing it uh I don't know, during our conversation, no? pero I would like to kumbaga, summarize na lang yung points. I think it's everything na sasabihin ko is wa well, ano yung it's very important for me and I believe ito talaga yung ano, ito talaga yung important. So, risk first approach, never quit, cha find a find a community. So, <laughs> yun yung tatlong main points, no? So, yun yan, hindi ka mata, hindi ka you can't be out of the game. Sorry, you can't play in the game pag wala ka ng capital. So, always think risk first. Another one is, <clears throat> excuse me, so find a community kasi it, it would help you grow and it would help you go further sa trading. And, yun, um, risk first, find a community and don't ever quit. So, if you really like trading or if you really see trading as something that you could do um, the rest of your life. Siyempre, hindi lahat ano ah. Uh, ito meron akong unpopular opinion na hindi lahat is built to be a trader. Mm-hmm. And the same way na hindi tayo lahat built to be a pilot or an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer or a business person, di ba? Mm-hmm. Um, trading is any any career, no? If it's If it's for you, then you should work hard for it. Pero if you're here just to try it out and ano, uh, you don't see yourself as trading talaga for the next few years, ano, uh, it's okay. It's okay talaga. So medyo, ano, no, medyo contradicting yung sinabi ko na if it's not for you, you could you could quit. Pero mm-hmm. you know, once, once you commit and once you know sa sarili mo na trading is your passion, you like trading, you want to do this full-time for the rest of your life or until you reach your ano, um, self-fulfillment goals, then by no means, don't quit talaga. By no means, quit. No? So never, never quit. Pag feel mo, magkikwit ka na, talk yourself out of it or look for other person na ano, uh, would talk sense to you. Kasi it's something that you decided already that you want to do. So yun. So if if you're not profitable right now, it would come. Um, just don't quit. Focus on risk and build the community. So guys, stress ko lang no. Yung sinasabi ni Sir Jermin na yung passion nyo trading iba yon sa kung yung passion nyo pera ha. <laughs> Kasi oh. a lot of us come into this game dahil nga gusto natin kumita. I mean, again, kung ayaw nyo kumita sa trading. Uh, pwede niyo i-send sa amin direction ni Sir Jermaine yung pera niyo na lang. Okay lang sa amin. Niya, oh. <laughs> yeah, but we all come into this game because of that. But yung trading itself is different from the money. Money should be a byproduct of yung process ng trading and not the other way around. Right, right, right. Totally agree. Okay, so thank you so much Sir Jermaine for your time. No, I really appreciate it. Uh, sa mga naikinig na sa atin ngayon, uh, if they want to reach out to you, aside from being able to listen to you on your podcast, meron po ba sila ibang ways like sa Facebook or something where they can approach you? Oy, uh, before I plug <laughs> social media pages, <laughs> I would like to thank you, sir, for, sir Gerald, for inviting me. No? Uh, I'm very excited for this, ano, for this video. Uh, talagang, ano, pinapanood ko yung mga old videos mo. No? So, I'm very uh, thankful at merong content creators no kasi when i was starting konti lang yung content creator and ngayon ang dami na at puro quality no so take your pick 
And ang maganda kasi dito, hindi na tayo hindi, walang walang time slot ang YouTube at Spotify, no. So mm-hmm. pag tapos ay yung panoorin yung video ni Sir Gerald, lipat na mga sa Buhay Mercado sa Spotify. <laughs> uh, so hindi hindi tayo nagko-compete actually. So we're both providing 100% agree. Uh, so we're not competing. And ayun, uh, if you want to reach me, uh, may Facebook page is Jermin Olivero. Just search for it. At pag may trader na friend, malam mga ko yun. And uh, I also have a, a page for my podcast sa Facebook. Uh, please like Boy Mercado Podcast on Facebook. So yun lang. And follow me on Spotify then. Follow this. Follow the podcast on Spotify. And soon maglalabas din tayo sa YouTube. So it's it's Boy Mercado. Uh, spell it as you say it. So, Mercado with a K. Boy Mercado sa Spotify. Um, iTunes, wherever you get your podcast. Okay, thank you very much, sir. No? As I said, uh, guys, I'll post all of the links na pinag-usapan namin. I'll go through this video again and make sure to post everything sa description box below for your convenience. No? Uh, thank you yeah. very, very much, sir. Pinoon lakan niyo ako. Alam ko, super busy po kayong tao and alam ko, gabi na rin po dyan. Ay, uh, no worries. Uh, thank you then, thank you then for this opportunity to share my story. Thank you for giving me an avenue for that. Thank you, sir. Okay, so that's it, no? Uh, I hope na gusto niyo interview and marami kayo natutunan. And if so, I would really appreciate it if you consider subscribing to my channel and maybe giving this video a like. Kung meron kayong questions or suggestions or opinions, please feel free to post them in the comment section below. Um, salamat ulit to Sir Jermin for his time. You can catch him in his podcast, Buhay Mercado. I posted the links in the description box below, as well as the links for yung mga ibang bagay na napag-usapan namin during the interview. And as always, guys, salamat ulit, good luck, and happy trading.